In this video, we're going to talk about uh, gravity, Newton's form of gravitation. One of Newton's big insights was that the force of gravity could be determined mathematically. He did this by uh, looking at the work of people that came before him, particularly Galileo and Kepler. Newton realized by looking at especially Kepler's work with planetary orbits that gravity is an attractive force and that the closer the distance between objects that have mass, the bigger the gravitational force. And that the bigger the masses of the objects, the bigger the gravitational force. Newton determined the form of the uh, gravity relationship by looking at Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Here is the form of gravity that Newton determined. And what we've got is the force due to gravity is equal to the mass of one object times the mass of, the, of another object divided by the square of the distance between them. Here I've set the gravitational constant to be equal to one, and that's just for simplicity's sake. Notice that you've got the product of the masses in the numerator and the square of the distance in the denominator. This will be important when we do um, some several cases where we look at how we can apply the force of gravity. So let's try case number one. Case one is where I've got two masses and one of them is mass one, the second one is mass one, and the distance between them is also one. I'm trying to keep it simple here at the beginning. So if I use Newton's form of the gravitational uh, force, I get one times one on top divided by one squared. And that's just one over one, which is one. So that's case one, but we can change it up a little bit. What if we increase the mass of one of the uh, uh, objects by four times? And so I've got the first mass is four, the distance remains the same as one, but the second mass also is just one. In this case, I'll continue to use Newton's form of the gravity equation. And what we get is four times one divided by one squared. Well, that's four over one, which is four. And so increasing the mass of any of the objects will increase the force of gravity between them. Now in this scenario, I have put the masses for both objects back to one, but I've increased the distance between them by two times. And so the distance between them is two rather than one. Again, use the form of the gravity equation, and we get one times one divided by two squared. Well, one times one is one, but two squared is four. And so the force of gravity in the end here is one over four. And so when I increased the distance between two objects by double, what actually happened is the force of gravity went down by four times. And this is why the force of gravity is sometimes called an inverse square law because the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. If I square the distance, then I can, can get a bigger number depending on what that distance is. If the distance was three instead of two, then I would have three squared, and in that case, the force here would be one over nine. Now in this case, I've got the masses, which are both one, but I've decreased the distance by half. It's 0.5, or you could write it as one half. When I put the numbers in to see how the force comes out, I get this, one times one divided by the square of the distance. In this case, the distance is 0.5 or one half. Well, one half squared is one fourth. So one divided by one fourth is four. If I have one divided by a fraction, I just take the reciprocal of that fraction. And so in this case, I get four. So when I decreased the distance by half, I actually quadrupled the amount of gravitational force. So the closer you bring two objects together, the bigger the force will be, and by a lot. Now here's another case. Instead of increasing the mass of the object on the left, I increase the mass of the object on the right. And so I've got one, which is one, and the second one, which is five. When I put the numbers in, I get this. 
1 times 5 divided by 1 squared, which is 5 over 1, and that's 5. It doesn't matter whether the large mass is on the left or is on the right. The force will come out to be the same either way, which is illustrated in, our, uh, in this next scenario in which I look at a free body diagram for each of the objects on the left and on the right. On the right, I've drawn an arrow on the dot representing the object on the right, and that arrow is pointed to the left, and that's because the object on the left is pulling on the object on the right with some amount of force. I can calculate that by using Newton's form of gravity. 1 times 5 divided by 1 squared, which is just 5 over 1, 5. But what about the force of the object on the right pulling on the left? Some students would say, well, the one on the right is pulling with more force because it's bigger. But you have to remember Newton's third law of motion, which says if the one on the left pulls on the object on the right, the one on the right pulls on the one on the left with the same amount of force, just in the opposite direction. And we can compute that out and see that it's true. When I compute the force of gravity of the right object on the left object, I get 1 times 5 divided by 1 squared, which is 5 over 1, or 5. It's the same. And so the arrow that I would draw here is the same size, just in the opposite direction. I could then ask, well, what's the difference here? The difference is which one will accelerate more. And as we learned in the Newton's third law discussion, the one that accelerates more for the same amount of force is the one that has the least mass. And so the one on the left will accelerate more compared to the one on the right. Let's try a scenario where we've got three objects. Here I've got an astronaut who is adrift halfway between the Earth and the Moon. Keep in mind that my figure here is not to scale. So I know that the Earth pulls on the astronaut with a certain amount of force, and that that force is pointed towards the Earth. So I'm going to draw an arrow that represents the gravitational force from Earth on the astronaut. And then I can think of the force that the moon would pull on the astronaut with. In this case, I have to consider the mass of the moon. Well, if I want to know what force the moon pulls on the astronaut with, I have to know that the uh, moon is less massive than the Earth. And so since the distances between the Earth and the astronaut and the moon and the astronaut are the same, he's halfway between both of those objects, then I know that uh, the distance is uh, the same on both sides. And so given the same distance, the one that pulls with the most amount of force is the one with the most mass. So Earth will definitely have a bigger arrow towards it than the moon. Which means, when I draw that, the gravitational force from the moon on the astronaut will be a smaller amount of force. Because these forces are not the same, and they're in opposite directions, there's a difference then between them and that is the net force. So the net force on the astronaut is pointed in the direction where there's leftover force. In this case, towards the left. And so, because there's net force on the astronaut, then I know if I just left the astronaut there, the astronaut would begin to accelerate towards the Earth. And as they got closer to the Earth, the force of the Earth on the astronaut would get bigger, and so they would continue to accelerate, and the force from the moon on the astronaut would actually get smaller. And so the net force pointed to the left would actually get bigger as the astronaut got closer to the Earth. So this is a way to apply all of Newton's uh, laws in one situation. Now, where do you think I could go in order to have the astronaut have the arrows to the left and the arrow to the right be equal to each other? If I went to the left, then that wouldn't solve my problem. The blue arrow would get bigger and the green arrow would get smaller and I wouldn't get closer to having them be the same. But if I went to the right of the center point, then the green arrow would get bigger, the blue arrow would get smaller, and there's a point somewhere between the midway, where the astronaut is now, and the moon, somewhere between those uh, locations, I would get the green and the blue arrows 
equal to each other and they would be balanced out. And in that case, the net force would be zero and I could just leave the astronaut there and they wouldn't accelerate in any direction. So that's another way to analyze a situation like this. When you do the lecture tutorial on Newton's laws and gravity, you'll see a similar set of scenarios, and I think you've got enough information now to complete that activity.